So probably many of you watching this video know how the gamma function extends the idea of the factorial to most complex numbers. But in fact, the gamma function was not the first extension of the factorial past non-negative integers. The famous Euler indeed had his own extension of the factorial, and it's dated to a letter that he wrote in 1729. So let's look at this extension, and then we'll maybe look at the question, why does this make sense? Okay. So for a non-negative real number x, we'll define x factorial to be the limit as m goes to infinity of m plus 1 to the x times m factorial over this rising product, x plus 1 times x plus 2 ending at x plus m. So in my mind, it's not even clear that this limit converges, but we will show that at least it converges when x is a natural number, giving us like motivation for this definition in the first place. So the most important thing for this to satisfy in order for this definition to make sense is it should be in line with the normal factorial when you, we have a non-negative integer. In other words, if we have n, which is in z bigger than or equal to zero, n factorial as defined the normal way should be equal to this limit as m goes to infinity of, well, m plus one to the n times m factorial over n plus one rising in multiplication up to m plus n. And this will be the limit that we will prove thus maybe giving some motivation towards this definition. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is note that this limit is equivalent to the following limit. And that is the limit as m goes to infinity. I'm gonna leave the numerator the same. I have m plus one to the n times m factorial over, and now I'm gonna divide the n factorial to the other side of the equation. But doing that will fill in everything from the ground up to n plus one, because n factorial is simply one times two times three, ending at n. So that means now the denominator will be m plus n factorial. And, well, since we're dividing by n factorial, then we should get one because that's maybe turning this left-hand side into one. Okay, so notice that this kind of limit doesn't really make sense, well, until this extension is defined, if n is not a non-negative integer because then we would have a non-negative integer factorial right here. Okay, so let's see how we might do this. Well, we're gonna make one more little transformation of this limit that will help us out. And that will be, we'll take the logarithm of both sides. So let's see what that'll leave us with. We have the limit as m goes to infinity of the logarithm of the argument of this limit. But we can apply logarithm rules here that will change exponentiation to multiplication, multiplication to addition, and division to subtraction. So in the end, we will have n times the natural log of m plus one plus the natural log of m factorial minus the natural log of m plus n factorial. And then that needs to be equal to the natural log of one, but the natural log of one is zero. Okay, great. And so now before we move on to the meat of this calculation, Let's take this and simplify it even more. And that's because we can take logarithms of factorials like quite nicely. That will use the fact that a factorial is repeated multiplication. You take a logarithm of repeated multiplication, you get repeated addition. So this term right here expands out into the following. We'll have the natural log of one plus the natural log of two ending at the natural log of m, okay? And then we'll subtract from that the natural log of one plus the natural log of two, ending at the natural log of m plus n. But what will that turn into? Well, I think we can see that a lot of the terms here will cancel. 
So this natural log of one, well, it's already zero, but it already cancels with that as well. The natural log of two will cancel. And in fact, this natural log of m will cancel with something in the middle there. And that'll leave us with minus the natural log of m plus one plus the natural log of m plus two ending at the natural log of m plus n. Okay, good. So just to reiterate, that is going to be deposited into this bit right here, which has the orange curly brace under it. Okay, so now let's maybe bring that limit up to the midpoint right here, and then we'll argue that it's in fact equal to zero. So in the last board, we argued that we needed to establish the following limit. So the limit is m goes to infinity of n times natural log of m plus one minus this sum of natural logs of m plus one up to m plus n, and we need all of that to be zero. So I'm gonna introduce a little bit of notation here. I'm gonna set this equal to a sub m. Okay, and now I'm gonna start building an inequality. Okay, so our first inequality will start with a sub m here. And now we'd like to build something bigger. So the way that we'll build something bigger here is make replacements in this term over here. So in fact, what we'll do is replace everything of the form L sub m plus, maybe I'll use k, and I'll replace all of those with the natural log of m plus one. Okay, great. So notice that's replacing everything except for the natural log of m plus one with something smaller. But then since that is being subtracted, we end up with something larger. Okay, great. And then another thing that's probably pretty important to notice is how many terms are here. There are exactly n terms here. That's pretty easy to count, I think. So that means we'll have n copies of this natural log of m plus one. So we've got this n times natural log of m plus one that like comes down from right there, and then minus n times natural log of m plus one. So that's clearly equal to zero. Okay, so we've bound a sub m above by zero. Now we'd like to bound it below by something, and we'll do a similar trick here. So let's take a sub m, and now let's do another replacement. And the replacement will be really similar. So in this case, we'll take everything of the form natural log of m plus k, and we'll replace it with the natural log of m plus n. We'll replace it with the largest term. So that means everything except for this last term is gonna get replaced with something larger. So that means we're taking away more, but if we're taking away more, we're creating a number which is smaller. Okay, so let's do that. We can bring down the n times the natural log of m plus one, and now we subtract n times the natural log of m plus n. Okay, so that's what we have there. Okay, but now let's combine those things. So we can take the n out front, and we'll be left with the natural log of m plus one over m plus n. And now let's recall that n is fixed. It's a constant with respect to our limit. What we're really doing is taking the limit as m approaches infinity. But let's notice that this rational expression right here approaches the number one as m approaches infinity. But that means since natural log is a continuous function, this whole thing approaches the natural log of one, or maybe really n times the natural log of one as m approaches infinity. But again, the natural log of one is zero. So what do we have? Well, what we've done is we've bound every term of this sequence above by zero and below by something whose limit is zero. So that means by the squeeze theorem, its limit is also zero. Okay, so that establishes that the factorial, the normal factorial can be expressed as this limit and gives us motivation for this extension definition. Okay, so now let's write down a limit for maybe a non-integral value and maybe poke towards evaluating it as a limit, and maybe we'll leave the final exercise as a homework. 
So like I said, now we're gonna try something a little loud. I don't think we're gonna go very far into it. That's not really the purpose of this video. The purpose was to establish that this is the right extension. But let's at least deposit ourselves at a limit which might be interesting to evaluate to see that we get the same kind of answer as we should with the other extension of the factorial. Let's look at one half factorial. So by what we have over here, that'll be equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of, let's see, we'll have m plus one to the half. So, you know, maybe I wanna write that as a square root, but I'll write it as a half for now. And then we'll have times m factorial over, well now this is gonna be a half plus one, which is three halves, times a half plus two, which is five halves, times all the way up to a half plus m. But let's see, what is one half plus m? I believe that is 2m plus one over two. So that's the general way of writing that down. But now I think we can rewrite this a little bit. Notice this is the limit as m goes to infinity of, Notice I have how many of these twos in the denominator? Well, I'll have exactly m. I can raise those up to the numerator, giving me a two to the m. And then I'm gonna rewrite this as the square root of m plus one for now, just because it's a little more aesthetically pleasing. And then I'll have m factorial over, well, I've got this rising product of odd numbers. Well, there's a name for that. That's the double factorial. So this is 2m plus one double factorial. And I haven't worked it out, but I would wager that finding this limit without knowledge of the integral representation of the gamma function would be quite tricky. That being said, we can use the fact that this is the gamma function evaluated at three halves, kind of via this, like, again, integral representation of the gamma function, which is the integral from zero to infinity of, this will end up being the square root of t times e to the minus t dt. And that integral is actually not so hard to calculate. And, and it can be calculated to be the square root of pi over two, which is sort of a backwards way of finding this limit. So here we've got the square root of pi over two. So now I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of a challenge, and that is how could you establish this limit in the blue box without using the equivalence of this to the integral representation of the gamma function, which of course we haven't proven. And if you're still around and you've liked this video, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.